If you want to be able to draw on your screen during Zoom or Teams meetings, much like this, to add annotations, diagrams, or whatever it might be, um, then there is a great app for the iPad called Video Pencil, which I highly recommend. Now, I'm using this with Ecamm Live, and so in this video, I'm going to talk through some of the features of this Video Pencil app and also how to set it up specifically for Ecamm. Um, but just know that it can also be used as a completely standalone app if you are literally just wanting to use it to draw over the top of your camera again in Zoom or Teams because there is a, uh, a Mac app that goes with it um, if you need it that can then uh, basically feed in any camera into this, allow you to draw on the screen and then have that feed into Zoom or Teams. So I'll talk about that a little bit later uh, on as well. There won't be a full tutorial on that, but I will talk about how you can do that. Uh, but one of the things that I love about this app over other methods that I've done previously for on-screen telestration, writing on the screen, is the fact that you do actually see the output from the camera, uh, or in this case from Ecamm, on the iPad itself. So what it means is that I can see exactly where I'm drawing. So I don't need to uh, guess if I want to just draw around my microphone windshield there. Uh, I can just get that pretty much exactly. Um, and then if I wanted to highlight the logo, I can draw on that as well. So uh, it's just that's the thing that really sets it apart from uh, those other methods is this sort of accuracy you've got in terms of where you are drawing, where you are writing. Um, another thing that's great about it is it is completely wireless if you're using it over NDI. I've got it plugged in at the moment just because a bit later I'm going to be sharing my whole iPad screen to show you how it works. But normally uh, in day-to-day -day use, I don't have this plugged in uh, to the computer. It's just completely uh, wireless and then occasionally plugged into a charger or whatever. But yeah, lots of great things to say about it. So I'll be talking through uh, that specific setup process for my use case on Ecamm uh, and some things to watch out for in terms of things that might catch you out in the setup because there are uh, a couple of little things that might catch you out there. Uh, so let's go through the setup process. Now, I've talked about using it completely wirelessly and uh, mentioned NDI. Well, NDI is a transfer protocol for transferring video uh, over a network. So uh, first thing you do need to make sure is it is on the same network. And obviously, you've downloaded the app itself. Um, but then uh, assuming you have done that, I'm going to walk you through uh, basically three or four different ste steps to actually set this up to be able to work with it exactly the way that I'm working with it right now. So step one is to actually make sure that Ecamm is broadcasting the output from Ecamm over NDI. So uh, that would be uh, by coming into the output menu uh, just up in the top here. And then you want to make sure you have got the NDI output um, as switched on. So the default will be off, uh, but just make sure it's on. Now, because all I'm using this for is to basically just see an, an overview of uh, my Ecamm output, I'm not actually bothered about the the quality that's received by the, the iPad. So I've just set that to the lowest so that there's less uh, bandwidth being taken up technically. Uh, so it's not really important to me, the uh, resolution that's coming into the iPad. Once you have turned on the NDI, then the next thing you want to do is just come over to the iPad app. And I'm just gonna uh, switch off some of these things for the moment on the iPad. Uh, but when you look at the app, um, in the top corner there, you can see where it says media. Uh, you can actually bring in uh, photos, videos, and things like that into the app. I don't use any of that functionality because all I'm using this for is just being able to write on top of my screen. I don't want to use this for any video or image production or anything like that, although it does have those capabilities. Um, so I'm just uh, using this uh, camera setting here. So if you look at the uh, where it says cameras, um, when you first switch it on, you'll likely just see the uh, maybe the back camera, the front camera, uh, front ultra wide. So this does give you access to the cameras on your iPad. Once again, a functionality that I'm not using, but you could technically be using this as your camera to go into Zoom. Uh, this is kind of an evolution. This whole app is a bit of an evolution of another app by the same developer, Michael Forrest, another app called Shoot, which enables you to use your phone uh, or iPad as a camera. Um, so you can actually apply uh, these effects that I'm doing with, you know, drawing on the screen, have it so that you are using it as your actual camera and also drawing over the top of it and telestrating directly onto it. Uh, that would seem a bit weird to me to be, uh, you know, using it as my camera and reaching out to draw on the screen. But nevertheless, it is there as a function. I'll come back to the camera setting in a moment. Uh, first of all, I do want to go into the actual settings, uh, which is that uh, also in that top left corner there. Uh, and when you go into the settings, first of all, uh, you'll come into this screen uh, where it links to the help and support user guide, all of that kind of stuff. And a lot of people get here and they see this one, which is get the video pencil camera for Mac, thinking that they actually need that to work with Ecamm. Um, this adds some functionality, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but I personally haven't used that. Uh, I don't use that app. I just use 
use it completely wirelessly. Um, I know that some people uh, that I've had uh, coaching calls with and certainly in the uh, Take One Tech Academy as well, we had a whole session where we went through trying to troubleshoot uh, some issues with, that people were having. Uh, I found that just using it completely wirelessly without the app is actually the best approach to uh, take and certainly less uh, less little stumbling blocks in there. So I've kind of skipped all the way past this. <laughs> and then down at the bottom, uh, you'll see where it says NDI. Uh, that's the one that I would say you want to go if you want to use it the same way I'm doing. Uh, and here you've got a few options. So first of all, NDI bandwidth, I've set that to high quality. So I've got the high quality feed coming from here back into the uh, back into the uh, Ecamm. Uh, NDI output, uh, again, toggled that one on. Uh, so that is basically sending the, uh, we've now turned on NDI in the uh, in the Ecamm itself to send the incoming stream into the iPad. Uh, and now we want to send the NDI output also over you know, what we're creating in the, what we're drawing on the iPad, send that back into the Mac as well. So we turn that one on. I've got 1080p there. I mentioned before with Ecamm, I'm not bothered about the resolution, but what this resolution is, is for the return feed. So this is the actual resolution of uh, the, you know, the, the, the drawings or the writing that we're doing on the screen. So for that, I do want that to be the highest resolution possible. So that's why I've selected uh, NDI output on and 1080p. The next one down here, NDI transparency, um, that is because we only want to really send the drawing part back to uh, Ecamm. So whilst we've got the income, the input coming from Ecamm, um, we don't want to be sending that back to it again. So turn on the transparency so that all that is being sent over NDI is basically whatever we draw on the screen. So these are the settings that I would recommend to be doing what I'm doing, uh, basically everything on and uh, highest quality possible in, a, in short. Uh, now, when you have turned on NDI, what you'll notice is if you come back to this camera selector, um, you'll see that in the uh, camera options, as well as the cameras that are built into the iPad, uh, you'll also see that you do have this uh, uh, Ecamm Live, and then it'll have the name of your uh, your uh, your Mac that you're, you've are you got Ecamm on. Uh, now, you can just tap on that. It's going to give you this weird sort of view to infinity if I do that right now. Uh, let me just do that, though, just to show you. If I tap on uh, my Mac, it should bring it in. And you'll see this kind of now basically it's bringing in the Ecamm view in here. It's looking like this right now because I'm sharing my screen. Normally you won't see anything like this. What you'll see is just basically the output from Ecamm will be coming directly onto the screen. And this is where I was at before where I could uh, just basically draw on the screen and uh, you would normally see that. But you can't see that right now because we've not missed, we've missed out a step. We've got to add this step of being able to add that in as an overlay. So that's the next step then, there's step three, which is to come into Ecamm. So if I uh, just share my Ecamm screen with you again. And although we are technically writing on a screen, it's an iPad screen, isn't it? Um, but Ecamm is seeing this as a camera. So in order to add this into our Ecamm, uh, we need to add it as a camera overlay. Uh, let me just change to a scene for a second that is, uh, it's maybe got no border on it. Uh, which one, this one? Uh, it might make it easier to sort of see this. And I'm going to add a camera overlay. So in Ecamm, I'm just going to come to hit the bottom here, new camera overlay, uh, and it will add in a default camera, which happens to be exactly the same one there. I'll just make it a different size on the screen though. Um, and here, if you go to the, uh, the camera picker, click on settings, uh, video source, live streamer cap 4K is the video capture card uh, at the moment that I'm using. Um, however, what we want to change it to is video pencil. Now, if you look in this uh, list here, um, because I've got the iPad mini plugged in over a cable, it is actually showing up in itself. Um, so that is not the one we want. We want this one here that has uh, video pencil in brackets at the end of the device name. So that's the one that you'll look for. It will be the name of your iPad, and then it will have the uh, video pencil in brackets. So we want to change uh, that over to that. And now actually you can see that effectively I've got an overlay and it's transparent. We've got that box around it um, and that is then coming into, uh, into Ecamm. Um, so now what we need to do is just kind of position this on the screen. But before I do, I'll just mention something, uh, an issue that some people seem to have had, uh, or some people have had, <laughs> which is that they may see that there is a kind of like solid background to it like that. And the reason for that is if you've got a border selected um, on the overlay, because whenever you bring a new overlay into Ecamm, it will just use the sort of previous settings that you've had. So if previously you had some sort of border width going on on that screen, the way that Ecamm implements borders is actually to 
effectively create a, uh, a full block behind the overlay um, of a, you know, whatever color you select. Um, and then it just sort of shrinks the overlay within that slightly to give the effect of there being just a border around it, if that makes sense. Um, and but that's because Ecamm is not expecting to receive a transparent uh, input like that. And so that's why you would basically have this issue. And so if I was to have come in here, and change that border uh, to a different color you can see that it's not a, it doesn't look like a border to you uh, but that's because the the input coming from uh uh, video pencil is is transparent so just know that if you've got any kind of solid color going on in the background there um, that you just need to come into the border width section here um, and just reduce that border width and as soon as the border width goes down to zero uh, then that does uh, completely disappear and now you can see it's just completely transparent with that bounding box uh, the other thing that you may want to do that may catch you out slightly is just double check that you don't have any corner radius because if you have a big corner radius on there uh, as you can see it would technically clip the uh, the top corners um, of anything that you draw on the screen. So for me personally, it makes sense to have zero border and zero corner radius as well. Um, and then what you want to do is we need to just align this on the screen because if you don't have it completely filling the screen, uh, then what you'll get is this slightly weird effect where when you look at the output on video pencil, um, I don't know if you can uh, see that. <laughs> Basically, I've got a kind of duplication of that little squiggle. So there's the one, where is it there? The one that I've actually drawn on the screen, but then we've got this weird little duplicate of it off to the side. And anything that I do draw on the screen uh, will have the same effect of being uh, sort of duplicated out elsewhere on the iPad mini screen. It's a little bit hard to see, it's trying to focus on my eyes. Uh, but basically what we need to do is make sure that, uh, as I say, the overlay in Ecamm is completely aligned with the actual main window, so a 16 by nine window. So let's come and do that. I'm just gonna grab this uh, and uh, move it until it is lined up with the top then move it till it is lined up with the uh, the left hand side there and then come and grab the bottom uh, right hand corner and drag that all the way out. Oh, my thing is disappearing off the screen there. Drag that all the way down to this bottom right hand corner. So now that is completely filling the screen. Um, and here you can see that's where it's appeared here is this overlay iPad mini video pencil. It's completely filling the screen. So always just make sure that it is uh, completely full like that and maybe center it horizontally and vertically as well. So just notice that there is <laughs> there is a, a vertical line that comes when you are lined up with the vertical plane and horizontal when you are lined up with a horizontal plane like that. Uh, so like that, there we go. Just get it exactly right. Um, and then you'd want to come and lock that overlay. So here, uh, Video Pencil, just click on lock. You might want to rename that as well. Uh, so you may want to just call it Video Pencil. And the other thing to do is just make sure that you have got this showing in all scenes. So in Ecamm, uh, you do have the option of putting things either in the background um, or you can have them in the current scene only. Uh, but what we want is we want this to be in uh, show in all scenes uh, because then we can just toggle it on and off whenever we need it and know that it will always be there. Um, so just make sure that if it has come into this show in current scene, uh, just drag it right up to the top. So it's literally at the very top of the stack. And then you know that you'll always be able to write over the top of of absolutely everything then. Um, so then the next thing to do then, once you've got that overlay, is to uh, then go and add a, an action to your Stream Deck to be able to show and hide that. So I'm just gonna get rid of this for a second. Uh, but if I go over to my Stream Deck, um, then we can go to the Ecamm uh, plugins here, or the Ecamm plugin, go to the actions and look for show hide overlay, uh, drop that button onto there and then uh, go to where it says overlay just down here and you're going to pick the name of the overlay which we've just given it the name video pencil. Uh, co conveniently it always brings in the uh, top one of the whole stack so if video pencil is at the top it will just naturally default to that but if not just go and find it and pick it and then what that means is if I was to draw on the screen so I'll just draw something on the uh, the iPad screen. You're not seeing it right now, um, but I've just drawn around all those little actions. But when I press the button on the Stream Deck that we've just created, it basically toggles this on and off. So for me, that is a really simple setup. Uh, what it also means is you could create a scene um, that is specific for uh, you know a whiteboard. So I've got a scene that's just like this. This is kind of my virtual whiteboard. Uh, and then as long as I've got video pencil toggled on, um, then basically I can just draw uh, my little diagrams and things like that. So those are the four steps essentially. Turning on NDI on your um, uh, 
uh, Ecamm on your Mac, uh, then turning on NDI on Video Pencil, um, then coming back into Ecamm and just bringing in that camera overlay and making sure it's all aligned and everything on the screen, um, and then creating that button on the Stream Deck to toggle it on and off. It is as simple as that. Uh, when it comes to the actual drawing tools themselves, let's just take a quick look at those. So if I just change out of uh, here so that it's not going to yeah, repeat on you, I've just kept it as a sort of completely blank background here uh, just to make it clear. The tools down at the bottom, we've looked at the settings at the top then. Uh, the tools down at the bottom is going to look familiar to the Apple Notes tools. Actually, the developer sort of redid this to look the same, but with some added functionality. So if I tap on any one of these pens, uh, there's basically five pens at the bottom there, and I can just cycle between them. If you tap on the active pen, you can change the size of it. I like how the actual size of the pen <laughs> underneath uh, increases in size based on uh, the size that you've got. So it's very clear what size pen you're using. Um, then you've got the color picker. So you can use either just a grid, pick off uh, one of those colors. You can use the spectrum picker, or you can use this sliders, and then there you can see you can also enter a hex code. So if you want to use your specific uh, branded colors, you can do that in there as well. Um, also here, if I just draw a little squiggle on the screen, uh, you've got uh, undo and redo. So I can press those. Those are the tools to the uh, far left of the toolbar there, undo and redo. Uh, you can go back quite far, so I could go all the way back to the thing that was on the screen at the beginning like that as well, or go forward again. Um, then also next to those five pens, you've got an eraser tool. So I can click on the eraser tool, and then I can just undo something like that as well. Uh, you've also got this selection tool here. So if I wanted to select something from the screen, uh, you can actually do that uh, and then move it around. Uh, so I'll just undo that. So if you want to move things around, you can do that as well. And, uh, and also uh, sort of reposition them on the screen. Uh, next to that is uh, this little add-in. Now, this is an in-app purchase. And by the way, this app is uh, free to use with a watermark, but you, to remove the watermark, there is an in-app purchase, quite rightly, <laughs> to, to uh, keep the developer's uh, lights on and keep him developing. Uh, but there is an in-app purchase as well for a laser pointer, which is, uh, I think, $3 or three pounds or something like that. Um, and that enables you to just basically point on the screen. So or useful if you just want to highlight something, um, then you can use that little laser pointer for that as well. Uh, there are the uh, clear drawing, so that is going to clear everything. Um, there are these three little dots here. Um, that enables you to um, uh, do a few things. So either share the drawing. Uh, one of the things I've put in as a feature request is kind of multiple pages. I would love to be able to have multiple pages that I can sort of swipe through, and then at the end of the meeting, just export all of them as a PDF. Uh, so I don't know whether that'll make it in, but uh, uh, at the moment, what all you can do is you can share an individual drawing. So if you've done something on the screen and you want to uh, sort of share that little... Uh, whatever it is, doodle or whatever, uh, click on share drawing, and then you've got all of the uh, regular sort of sharing, uh, the, the iOS share sheet, essentially. Uh, draw with finger, so that is an option that you can toggle on and off. If you just want to be able to draw with your finger, you can do that in there. Uh, and then the other one that they've got here is live titles. Now, that's an interesting idea. It's not something I use too much, uh, to be honest, but I'll just show you what it is nonetheless. Uh, if you've got live titles switched on, um, and then you select a line tool, and then you see that there is this little T icon next to where it says um, clear drawing. Um, so you've got this one here. If you tap on that, then you can choose the language and then you can choose the font and everything. Uh, but basically what happens is if I draw a line and then speak, it will actually put the text in itself. So if I go like this, hello, <laughs> then there you go. And basically what's going to happen is it will fill the length of the line with that word, um, useful in meetings. So it is good for, you know, putting, if you want to put headlines or bullet points or things like that, but you'll see there that the text is varying different sizes depending on, uh, you know, the length of the line and the length of the sentence it's going to put in. Uh, but it is a nice little feature nonetheless, but like I say, not one that I use too much. Uh, I've got other ways of doing this kind of thing, but I do like the fact that it's there. Uh, you can see also, because I use the Thai language on my uh, iPad, it has also got that. So if I speak in Thai, it will actually add in uh, decent Thai uh, subtitles as well. Uh, so those are the sort of built-in uh, controls then uh, for, for annotating. Uh, 
and I really like the sort of direction this is going. Like I say, it is actively under development. And once again, going into settings uh, and going into help and support and go to that uh, Discord up at the top there, um, you'll be able to go and join the Discord and put in feature requests and stuff like that. So uh, it's great to see apps that are under active development. Now, I've mentioned the way that I'm using this completely wirelessly. I do just need to touch on the app, though, because I talked about that and how I don't personally use the app. But what the app does is um, in exactly the same way that I'm bringing in my camera from Ecamm, and I showed you how you can see that in the camera list. If you've got the app installed on your computer, what you'll see on your iPad is instead of just the front camera, back camera and the NDI camera, um, you will also see all of the other cameras you've got on your computer. And the way that that might be useful is if you aren't using Ecamm, but you just want to be able to annotate, as I say, on your regular camera that you've got, um, you know, normally going into Zoom. So let's say you've just got a, whatever it is, either a webcam or a, you know, <laughs> whatever kind coming in over a capture card into your computer and you normally take that directly into Zoom. Well, now that can go into to, uh, here and you would just see the output of that camera on your iPad. Um, but then what you have is you have the uh, video pencil camera will show up in Zoom, assuming you've got the app installed on your Mac, that will show up in Zoom as a camera itself. And so instead of selecting your actual camera, you will select the video pencil camera in Zoom. Um, and basically what's happening is the feed from that camera is coming into your iPad, but then the video pencil app is then taking your annotations from the iPad and sort of adding that in to then go into, into Zoom. Um, and so you can do all of the same sort of on-screen annotation as I've just talked about, um, just directly onto any camera that's going into Zoom, Teams, or wherever it happens to be. So uh, in technically, that is a little bit more of a uh, lightweight solution from a networking point of view, because basically it's all it's doing is taking that um, uh, transparent overlay and adding that into the feed that is going to uh, to your... Um, uh, you know, communication app, bit Zoom or whatever it happens to be. Uh, but like I say, for me and for Ecamm users, I find that that is just a little added layer of complexity. And so the way that I've just talked about doing it would be the way that I'd recommend going for sure. Uh, so if that is something that is of interest to you, I'll leave a link down in the description to the Shoot app. Highly recommend uh, checking that out. Uh, and I'll also leave a link to some other uh, sort of Zoom related videos over here on the right hand side as well. I hope you find that useful. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat or join the Take One Tech Discord and join the conversation over there.